this video, I'm going to give you my impression of Desjardins long-term disability insurance company as a lawyer who's been dealing with them for the past 50 years. So the first thing to know about Desjardins is they are not like a lot of the long-term disability insurance companies in Canada. They are actually a nonprofit financial group. So this does put them out of the norm in terms of what uh, structurally how these things are set up. But unfortunately, there's, there's no difference in the experience of dealing with them you wouldn't know that they are not actually a for-profit insurance company because of the way they act. They, they're not any easier to deal with. They don't approve claims anymore, on my experience, any more than any of the for-profit insurance companies. So their status as a nonprofit profit uh, company doesn't really play into this at all in terms of your experience in dealing with them with a long-term disability claim. Desjardins is, is not part of the big three in, in uh, long-term disability insurance companies in Canada. It's more down on a second tier. However, it is a company over the past 15 years I have seen on the rise. They are certainly improving their internal systems and processes, and they're much more modern in how they approach these claims. Now, that doesn't mean you won't run into issues with them. In fact, we see a lot of issues with Desjardins uh, because of some of the issues, some of the things I'll discuss here a little bit later in the video. Now, in terms of where you're going to see them, you will likely have a Desjardins policy if you are working in the in the uh, medical sector for a municipality, for cities. We've even seen them insure some provinces, the long-term disability plans for some provinces. Uh, but that's where you're going to see them. It's usually going to be small to medium businesses, but I have seen them in bigger businesses, especially in the medical sector. So some things you need to keep in mind here. Uh, number one, they have a different definition of disability than many of the other uh, insurance companies out there. Now, what I mean by that is the wording of what it means to be disabled under their policy is different. It contains some language that could be taken to mean that it's a more difficult standard to meet. So it could be seen as harder to be proved you're disabled under their policy as opposed to how it's defined under other insurance companies' policies. Now, I'm not clear that, a, that that's ever been found that way in a court of law, but just reading it, that's what I take away from it. Certainly, they will argue that uh, in individual cases, but I haven't seen any real practical effects from the definition that they're using in terms of it made a big difference in any of the cases that I've worked on, but it could. And so it's something to keep in mind when you are dealing with your own individual case that the, the, the way their policy is worded for disability is going to be different. So keep that in mind. So if you read things online uh, that may pertain to other insurance companies' policies, it may not pertain to Desjardins because they do have that different wording. Number two, this is something I personally have encountered, and I don't know how widespread this is. I've canvassed lawyers in the office, and they agreed with me that Desjardins is known, at least to me and my colleagues, as a company that takes very, they're very fixated on technical technicalities, okay? So they will very fixate on technical reasons to deny your claim, that you were late in applying, that you left the employment to go do something else. Like they're always searching for technicalities above and beyond the, the fact that you just don't meet the definition of disability in their point of view. They're, they're always focused on these legal technicalities to the point I, in some cases, a, a case I had a long time ago, like we, myself, the judge, like everyone was just baffled. Why are they fixated on this legal point, this technicality that really does not apply here? This is something you're gonna encounter. And if you do, if your case is being denied based on these legal technicalities, reach out for legal help. Don't try to keep going forward with it. Desjardins is known for digging in their heels on sometimes these absurd legal technicalities, and that's just the way they work. They're allowed to do that. It's within their legal rights to do that. But don't spin your wheels uh, with all these appeals when they're denying you on a legal technicality. You're not going to get out of that without having a lawyer threaten or move forward with a lawsuit against them. I have noticed that they will do very long, detailed denial letters. So when you get the denial letter denying your claim, one of my criticisms is some insurers will just give basically no information. They'll just say you're denied or give some very vague reason. That's something you see mostly with what I would call the less professionally run insurance companies who are not in the upper tiers in terms of how of their professionalism and that type of thing. This is an area where Desjardins has improved in that they will give detailed reasons. Now, a lot of these reasons, again, are these technicalities and things I don't agree with, but at least they're giving some details there so you have something to go on. And it does make it easier to appeal a claim, especially if you're representing yourself, 
when you've got a detailed reason for denial. Now, I'm not saying they do this in every case, but it's certainly a trend that I see in a lot of the cases we deal with them. So that tells me that there's an internal policy that requires them to put some details in there. They will often cite like your deadlines at the bottom. So they're very upfront about that type of stuff, which is good. And that's something I have noticed with them. Uh, the last point here is they will often use outside lawyers, almost always my understanding. Outside lawyers, inside lawyers. Insurance companies work two ways. They either hire the lawyers themselves and they work internally within the insurance company. They're called in-house lawyers because they're lawyers who are employed and work in the insurance company and they handle the claims when lawsuits and things happen. The other approach insurance companies can do is they don't hire their own lawyers internally. They, they, they hire an outside law firm to represent them. Similar to as if you hire a lawyer, you're gonna hire an outside law firm. You're not gonna hire your own lawyer to work for you personally, okay, uh, as a business. So they work with outside law firms. Unfortunately, that often means that things are gonna be dragged out. I hate to say it, but my experience is much more positive dealing with in-house lawyers who work in the insurance company than the outside lawyers. Things will run more smoothly. The timeframes are more abbreviated to getting things done. With outside lawyers, and I'm not gonna paint them all with a bad brush, but things drag out. They're, they're more difficult to pin down on things. They're more likely to wanna fight everything tooth and nail. So that is, a, that is something you need to know. When you're dealing with Desjardins, they're gonna hire outside lawyers, and that does have implications for how long and difficult some of these appeals are gonna be when you go into the legal realm. Now, you don't have to not often have a lot of choice because that's your only route you can go with them. But keep in mind the use of outside lawyers by the insurance company can drag things out and make things a little more acrimonious. Last of all, uh, Desjardins has had some issues in recent years. They had a successful uh, lawsuit against them in uh, British Columbia where most recently they were uh, they, the court found that they were inappropriate in how they managed the claim, that they acted in bad faith. And the court awarded, I think, 200,000 in punitive damages and another 50,000 for like mental distress, aggravated damages. That's unusual. So that's money paid on top of what the person got for getting their claim approved. That's a big deal. And that was recently upheld in 2021 by the Court of Appeal in British Columbia. So it's on the books. So usually in response to these types of judgments, it does create some internal changes within the insurance company that they don't want to, they don't like being hit with this. It's bad publicity, it, they don't want to pay this extra money. So I'm, I'm assuming that Desjardins has been making some internal changes and I'm not sure how that's trickled down to the frontline uh, people managing these claims, but that's something else to keep in mind. All right, that's all. That's just a little overview of Desjardins. If you have a case with Desjardins, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team. I'm disability lawyer, David Brannon. Please subscribe to our channel. And if you, if you want to get more information on us, sign up for our email list and we will see you back here next time.